In this video we'll take a look at Nginx's design as a reverse proxy server and see how it compares to Apache. By default Apache is configured in what's called pre-fork mode, meaning that it spawns a set number of processes, each of which can serve a single request at a time, regardless of whether that request is for a PHP script or an image. Nginx on the other hand deals with requests asynchronously, meaning that a single Nginx process can serve multiple requests concurrently with that number basically just depending on the system resources available to the Nginx process. That said, because of this asynchronous design, Nginx, unlike Apache, can't embed server-side programming languages into its own processes, meaning that all requests for dynamic content has to be dealt with by a completely separate process like PHP FPM, and then reverse proxy back to the client via Nginx. Now, this might sound somewhat overcomplicated, but it's actually fairly simple to set up and we'll be covering it in depth in one of the next videos. Of course, not having to deal directly with embedded programming languages like Apache does makes Nginx a lot less resource hungry. And this doesn't mean that resources used for the processing of server-side languages is just freed up. They are simply being allocated elsewhere, like in the most common case of PHP, to the PHP FPM process, but it does mean that unlike Apache, these server-side language modules don't need to be run for every single request the server receives. Instead, Nginx will handle serving static resources without PHP ever knowing about it, whereas Apache will handle every request with that costly overhead. And this is exactly where the real savings on system resources come into effect. So, essentially, a well-configured Nginx web server serving mixed content, meaning both static and dynamic resources, should always be more efficient and less demanding on system resources than a similar Apache setup. So, you've most likely heard or read the following sentence at least a few times. Nginx is faster than Apache. Well, it's really important to first define what's meant by fast. Nginx can't magically deliver data to the client any faster than their internet connection will allow. But it can A. Serve static resources much faster than Apache. And B. Handle a much larger number of concurrent requests. Remember, Nginx will serve static resources without the need to involve any server-side languages, and this gives it quite the advantage over Apache. And as for handling concurrent requests, Nginx can potentially receive thousands of requests on a single processing thread and respond to them as fast as it can without turning down any of those requests. Apache, on the other hand, will accept requests up to a pre-configured number and then simply reject the rest. So, if we define performance or being fast in terms of how many clients can be served under high load, and assuming the usual mix of static and dynamic resources, then yes, Nginx is definitely faster than Apache. And despite Apache being a very stable and mature project, should also provide more reliable performance under high load. Nginx's configuration takes a very different approach to Apache in that requests are interpreted as URI locations first, whereas Apache defaults to and highly favors file system locations. Of course, Apache does use URI locations, but they are generally for more abstract resources. And in most cases, like when creating and configuring a vhost, Apache will use directory blocks. This preference for file system locations can also be seen in the use of htaccess files for overriding specific directory configurations. Nginx doesn't offer any similar functionality, but seeing as Apache's htaccess overrides carry a significant performance penalty, they shouldn't really be considered an advantage. And it's also because of this very design of interpreting requests as URI locations that allows Nginx to easily function as not only a web server, but anything from a load balancer to a mail server. That brings us to the end of this video, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of what Nginx is and why you'd want to use it. In the next video, we'll get into some practical stuff and see how to go about installing Nginx.